Hi, my name is Praise Ganiyu and you are welcome to One Soaking Channel, your number one gospel channel in Nigeria, West Africa and in the world at large. Here you are going to be getting messages that will defy you and also build up your spiritual stamina. So kindly subscribe, like, drop your comment and also turn on your notification bell so you can get notified when we drop any other videos. Thank you. You know, while I was on campus, I was, I was very rugged. I was a radical Christian. That is I'm not normal. You know, the crazy. Ah, that was how I was. You can't even discuss sin with me. I come into the common room, people smoking will stop smoking till I leave. Because I was radical. That, hey. I was so radical that cultists were afraid of me. Cultists with weapons. That was how I was. So I don't know whether they wanted to set me up or something. Those, one of those days, my dormitory door, you know, you, you can't stay alone. Four people in one room. So I was staying with the gangsters. I was staying with gangsters. And I like that. <laughs> so the, we agreed that we can't be locking our door. The door has to be open. That one of them said they can't keep keys. So the way we'll do it is... <laughs> Leave the door. And those guys were so rugged that you can't even steal from that. Hey, they were... Hey! And I was also a radical. <laughs> do you know that as rugged as those guys were, we used to pray in that room. Mm, we'll, we'll pray first in the morning. And call on the name of Jesus. That's the only way there will be peace. Now we have to agree. They can go out and be gangsters, but in the morning, Jesus, Jesus, say Jesus, say Jesus. <laughs> Everything in your environment is determined to make you begin to accept a new doctrine. And some of you have already swayed. You're already floating in the philosophy of the realm. So our room had no lock. You just come in and you go out. So you can come in, find someone with ladies. All right? They, it's okay. They can even greet you and say, oh, well, okay. Your book is there. Your book is there. Yeah, so. So I used to stay all, all night reading and praying because... My room is a brothel. And I was like that for one session. Because I did not want to eat of the portion of what? Of the king's meat. One of those days I was in the room trying to get my stuff and a lady just came and, and removed her clothing. I think she forgot who I was because... <laughs> She came with a doctrine, a strong doctrine. The king had add, added pepper to his chicken. It's pepper chicken that the, that the king was offering that day. I preached the gospel to that lady. And somewhere in the process, she had to take her and... Uh, it, it was interesting to know that my room had no key and no light. There was no, you, are, you are not, you don't understand. There was no light. The agreement, the first agreement was that we will pray. Then the second agreement is no key, no light. So this is how we balance this, this matter. Prayer must be in the room, but no key, no light. Came back from the lectures one day with my lab coat to do some reports and all of that. And then the court people had fought. They had poisoned my roommates to die. And the court guys, the rugged guys, were there as, as I was coming. He was asking for me, just asking for me, asking for me. So when I came, I wanted to pray for him. The Lord said, I should ask him, who, who is his mother? His mother is a minister of the gospel. But he is the head of the court on campus. That was the day I had the opportunity to present the gospel to him. Because he was afraid of death, he accepted. <laughs> Slept. 
he woke up and vomited the poison and rose up and told me, I said, Pastor, that prayer has saved me, but me, I am in darkness. He put his thing up. <laughs> Job chapter 23, verse 12. Job gives us a perspective. He said, neither have I gone back from the commandment. You know, there'll be challenges to move you away from the commandment. He said, this is Job trying to tell God that, see, me, there were opportunities for me to discard my convictions, but I have not gone back on the commandment of your lips. I've esteemed the word of thy mouth more than my necessary food. Can you see the word of his mouth and food, meat? And so there are two things. You are within two things. It's either you will stick to the word of his mouth or you accept the food from the table. And the moment you begin to accept the food from the table, you begin to migrate. Your prayer life will begin to die. You begin to have relationships that the Holy Ghost in, in you will be expressing a sense of rejection. But it's as if you are so bound that you cannot liberate yourself from the shackles. There was no man that mistakenly became great in the kingdom of God. Every one of us that is in this room Satan is fighting to gain mastery of your mind and to plant in your mind such seeds that have the capacity to turn your destiny into something that after 10 years, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you ask yourself, are you the one? One of those court guys that was in my room when the hitman was poisoned, he watched me that day because he knows how the hitman cried, cried and called my name. They had to come to the lab to get me from the lab. My colleagues thought something had happened. That hey, his pastor, they came to call pastor. Oh. And as we went there, it was poison. That guy watched how I prayed for him. And a few minutes after the prayer, he slept. And that was what he saw that made him give his life to Christ. That guy. He's born again to today. My school was one of the most notorious higher institutions of learning. You are either a cultist or you are, a, you are an extreme believer, a radical follower of Jesus. When I mean radical, I mean you are not afraid of death. So even the people that carry guns, they are afraid of you because why are you not afraid of death? You are not human. <laughs> Those were the situations we grew up under. He said, I have not, what, gone back on the commandment of his lips. I've esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. So this is Job saying and giving us the reasons for which he lives a fasted life. He does that in order that he might prioritize the commandments of God over and above his need for food and as long as you can conquer greed you will you will reject what the king is offering as long as you can conquer your appetites you will reject what the king is offering so we need to look at a few appetites and how to conquer them but are you there are you following all right so let me take you to the book of first corinthians chapter 9 then show you the law of appetites First Corinthians, quickly. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. He said, Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. It means there are rules. There is a way you can run and you will not obtain. So Paul is counseling you to run so that you might what? Obtain. Go on. He said, every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. He's telling you how to win. How you are going to win in this race. That's what he's telling you. If you are striving for mastery, the rule 
is that you must be temperate in all things. And I need to explain to you what it means to be temperate. Are you there? Temperate means that you must be in charge of your appetite. All right. Uh, those days in the university in Nigeria, there's something we call Nougat Games. Nigeria University Games Association. Uh, because uh, the football team, the Nigerian football team, will need to get footballers, young footballers that can come in. The basketball team will need to get amateur basketballers, the karate team, the judo team, all of that. So the campus was the pool from when uh, these functionaries were extracted. So, and the festivity that was the platform for the scouting was the Nuga Games. Now, in the city, in my city, there are two universities. So, and only one Taekwondo champion is going to come from that, that region, right, to represent that region in a more sophisticated tournament that will now yield the ultimate champion. So while they were doing the tournament in our own region and our two universities were competing, the guy who was the best in Taekwondo, he went on break, ate so much chicken, came back. When they put him on the scale, he was heavier than the, the, the category, the weight in the, yeah, he was heavier than the category. So the coach put him on six days dry fasting. Now, you are not with me, you are not with me. The dry fasting was not because he was going for a crusade. The dry fasting was because he wanted to strive for the mastery. The rule of striving for the mastery is that you must be temperate in all things. You must have a grip of your sleep life. Some of you sleep the sleep of death and you have died. If you sleep that way, you can never be a spiritual man. You can be something else, but not the master. And that's why Paul says, before he began to give us insight, he said, run in such a way that you will win. Not everybody will win that is running. That was when he entered into this matter and said, every man that striveth for what? Mastery is temperate. They put him on six days dry fasting. After the six days dry fasting, what they, was the day where they will come and test officially whether their, their weights fit into the category. By the time he came from six days dry, they had to support him to stand on the scale. He was exactly the last limit, the upper limit of the range. They, they documented it. That's when he went to eat. Meanwhile, the guy that was the Taekwondo guy of our school, because everybody knew he was Taekwondo, he was a black belt, this is how he used to walk. Like this. <laughs> when they came for the competition, the man that fasted broke his two legs. He broke that our man's legs. The, the legs with which he was doing like this. <laughs> because our man could not, could not strive for mastery. In this race that we are talking about, the number of runners is inconsequential. What we are saying is only those that are striving for mastery will obtain. It means that a larger population of students that come into this place are going to be products of the king's meat because only few will learn the way of mastery. You must master your sleep. You must be in control of sleep. You must be in control of food. You can, you can see food and decide not to eat. Anytime you have an appetite that you cannot say no to, you are already invited to the table of the king. You can see free sex like I had that night with no light, no light. The place was quiet and cold. Are you sanctuary? Misa Kamo But I said, no. That's the way of mastery. The opportunities for you to indulge yourself is available, but you have the masculinity to say no. 
And if you cannot say no to yourself a thousand times, you will not be able to say no to others. It means the moment the king invites you to the table, you say, okay, ah, we have not seen this kind of meat in our village. <laughs> Whenever you notice that your eyes are no longer yours, your eyes have x-ray, you can see beyond clothes and identify the person in naked form. Uh, the reason why many people are laughing is because their eyes need a touch. The eyes need a touch. When your eyes become like that, you will need two days of dry fasting for you to own the eyes again. It, it's no longer yours. The moment a lady passes, you are gone. You are gone like that. That was how we almost died in Lagos. We were in a bus. I was in the front. I was the one that can tell the story because I was in the front with the driver. A lady passed and the driver was watching me. That was how he rammed us. Our blood was about to be poured on the altar of that worship. <laughs> you know what saved us? You know that road divider? The road divider. The, I shouted on him. So he now used the tire, climbed the road divider like this, and then came down. He was, he was gone. The reason why he went is because he had no mastery. Now, if your life doesn't pay attention to the growth of your spirit, you're on a mission to become exactly what Babylon was. You will get the education, you will stand before the king, but you will serve and adorn Babylon with all of your treasures. He said, he that striveth for the master is temperate in all things. So a man that knows he has a destiny with God, you will know that he knows when you see him exercising discipline and restraint. It's a proof that he knows he has a destiny that is greater than him. When you find someone that is loose and loud, he is dead while he's yet alive. When I was going for your service, I said I was going to seek God. I was going to seek God, pray the way I've never prayed. I was going to fast the way I've never fasted. I was going to give the way I've never given. And I started on my program began to fast from January. I fasted February. I fasted March. I fasted April. I fasted May. I fasted June. I fasted July. I fasted August. August 1. August 2. August 3. August 4. August 5. August 8. Then the heavens opened a little. And God spoke to me. God, you know what he said? He said, I can see that you are fasting. <laughs> I've not eaten since January and you are coming to tell me that Understand that? Well, I, I continue. Finished August, September. On the 20th of October, he wanted to visit me. Then he sent. Well, the, the number of the angels that I can tell you that I saw, the ones I interacted with, there were two of them. They were in the room for three days, but I did not know. Oh, my room had no, you know, those nettings that I put on the room so that the mosquitoes would not come in? He had no netting. So, my room was the parlor for mosquitoes. Those angels stood there and mosquitoes didn't come into my room for days. I was, I was wondering, I said, what is this? Then I, and I started sensing that, okay, it may be God though. And I asked God, okay, if you are the one that is doing this thing, show me a sign. Then heat came on my head. I said, you know, I studied... I studied my mathematics very well. And the, the probability of this heat coming, I calculated it. I told him. So if it is you, can you move it here? He moved it. So I calculated that one to him. I said, I'm not doubting you. It's just that you know I've gone to school. <laughs> he showed me signs that day that blotted out all my mathematics. That was when I saw the first angel. That was how my interaction with angels started. And I found out that what I was looking for was not lost. But it will never reveal itself to you until you are ready. Until your goal, your purpose or pursuit is pure. The child works strong in spirit. 
and was in the deserts until the day of his showing forth to Israel. That means God managed his visibility. He was a mighty prophet, but God ensured that he was not visible. Though, even if he goes on television, what's your, the name of your national television? GTV. All right. So even if he goes on GTV by nine, I say, I'm on television. Nobody will watch it because he's still in the wilderness. Nobody will see him. God will make it such that you will be covered until the day of his showing forth. You, you have promoted yourself. It means that there is no day of your showing forth. Go back into the closet. Your days of seeking mastery are not yet ended. We must be stronger than our fathers. If not, Christianity will die in our time. We must be strong. We must be stronger. Most of our fathers grew, grew just in prayer. They are, they are not deep in the world, but they grew in prayer. We must have two wings. You can't fly with one. So we have, we have the issue of inadequate discipleship in the body of Christ. We, we, have, we are shapeless, voiceless. And our numbers come for nothing. Politically, at least you know that. We can't decide and say, this is where we will go. And the church will move. We have no voice. So, so we have numbers that don't translate to power. We must be stronger than our ancestors for Christianity to survive. You must migrate away from the table of Nebuchadnezzar. And build the much needed mastery required for you to survive the days that are upon us. In a moment, I'd like you to stand up quietly. Don't talk to your neighbor. Quietly. Now listen to me. It is the Lord's will for his foot soldiers to be recovered. Many have strayed. And tonight, I give you an opportunity. You were born in light. You started with fire, flames. Then when you came to this campus, you began to, your, your flames began to die. Your spirit cried, but there was no help in sight. And your spirit has been in a state of mourning because the spirit of Christ that is in you is crying out that there's no structure to make him become the predominant influence over your life. And tonight you want a restoration. You want to come back to where you once were. And to forge ahead by God's good grace. If that is your situation and you want me to help you, to pray with you, put your right hand on your chest and your left hand up. Forget about your neighbor, the person by your side. The Lord wants his armies to return. Return, return, that we might look upon thee. If your hand is raised, begin to ask God for mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. Ask him. Speak to him in your own words, in your own language. You know where it all began, ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy tonight. There's an oil that was on your life, an anointing had rested, but it had vanished. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.